I'd like to begin by going back almost 20 years to um, September 11, 2001. As we look back on that day, we recognize it initially. We went through a period of total disbelief, unable to process and accept what we were seeing over and over on that TV screen. Some of you may well remember that. Some of you may not have even been born yet. However, the scenes were baffling, and though we found ourselves watching them repeatedly, we did not and could not comprehend what was happening. Later that day, the tragedy became more personal, for names and faces began to replace the surreal images that seemed almost impossible in their horror. As that happened, grief and sorrow for those people whose lives ended so abruptly and hatred began to swell up inside. We also began to think of the many who reached out to their fellow citizens, especially the thousands of public servants who walked and ran toward the unimaginable to help, to render assistance. A most enduring image for us is a story told by several of those struggling down the stairs of the World Trade Center to escape death. I quote, as we were trying to go down, we met police officers and firefighters going up, and we clapped and cheered. Now we know that those same brave souls almost surely perished in the collapse of that building. End of quote. As hard as it is to comprehend planes flying into buildings, it is also hard to understand the motives of those courageous men and women who literally walk through fire to try and save and protect the lives of others. Some of them perished, some were badly hurt. Although many of us would like to think that their uniforms somehow protected them. From all that terror, pain, and horror that we would feel, it did not. It prepared them, but it did not shield them. In the end, they were people just like us. While their uniforms somehow um, protected them, from, uh, we thought that they would protect them from that terror, it, it didn't. It prepared them, but it did not shield them. In the end, they perished. Now, while their uniforms and equipment may have partially uh, obscured their individuality, each of them had a name and a story. Each had families, friends, dreams, fears. Yet on this day, these people showed that they stood apart. What made them different was their quiet, often anonymous hero heroism. They were public servants. They served their fellow servants, or their fellow citizens rather, in a way that many people would find it very difficult, if not impossible to understand. How could they be so selfless? How can we understand their heroism? The answer to this question goes to the very soul of the public service. Yes, it was their job. Yes, they were trained. But that does not diminish the nobility, the honor, or the sacrifice of their actions. In a peculiar way, this ghastly act of terrorism can remind us why some of those chose the public service. Very simply, we care about our country, our community, and our neighbors. Each of us plays a role in improving the lives of others. Service to the public, helping people in trouble, making the world safer, helping children learn and prosper, literally going where others would not go, is our job and our calling. The ability to be selfless, to be open to the needs and values and wants of others is an integral part of each public servant. And it's a part of who we are that shouldn't require effort or even tragedy for us to recognize or to even acknowledge. We need not wait for such events to awaken our sense of humanity and respect. As these events have shown, service to the public is indeed a proud and noble profession. And that's what I'm going to be speaking to you about. Simply to me, it is a higher calling. Look, life is not just about the almighty dollar. If you wanna be a millionaire, 
this isn't for you. But you know what? If I can share one lesson with you, life and personal happiness are not always about money. Remember this. I had the honor of working for the federal government of, in Ottawa for some 40 years, seven years, firstly, with the late Senator Pavlo Yuzik, a truly wonderful man. I, I miss him to this day. He was your consummate public servant. He was appointed by the late John uh, Diefenbaker, Prime Minister from the Ukrainian community. And he served that constituency well for his all the years as a senator. He wasn't all, also the, the, I mean, he was the father of multiculturalism, but that's not everything. And everybody tends to forget. For example, he was a great human rightist. Maybe one day we can speak about that. Anyways, it was an honor and a privilege to work with this gentleman. Do I regret leaving family and friends, dropping everything, moving to Ottawa, and working here for four decades? <laughs> no way. If I had another 40 years to relive my career, I would not change one single solitary thing. Information on global trends that might have Canadian security implications are collected by our security liaison officers posted at Canadian diplomatic missions abroad. These officers consult with foreign police and security intelligence agencies, collect and analyze open source information in the various countries, and conduct security screening assessments of prospective immigrants and visitors. I had the honor and privilege of serving as a diplomat from 95 to 99 in Vienna. Ladies and gentlemen, CSIS is a great organization. I, I strongly, strongly encourage you to work. We have offices throughout Canada from east to west and or serve internationally. And as I mentioned, what made me sad was that as an intelligence officer, who lectured regularly at the CSIS Academy, there were no Ukrainian Canadian faces. And to this day, there still aren't that many. We need people with foreign languages, with foreign experience. We need people that understand different cultural groupings. We need simply to have people who understand the world today. If you want an exciting career, please consider CSIS or any other departments of the federal government, be it National Defense, Agriculture Canada, Finance, whatever. There are great careers here. Leave your parents, leave your nests, leave your uh, games and your colored TVs, leave your comfort zone. You won't regret it.